In today's video, I'm going to talk about my Heathkit IN3127, which uh, is my latest acquisition. This is what's called a decade capacitor substitution box. They also make a, um, a resistance box, which is what I actually wanted, but I, somebody had bought that before me, so I ended up with this capacitor substitution box. I initially wanted the resistance box for this little breadboard circuit here since I thought it would be okay it's easier to use this than to use these potentiometers and play around with screwdrivers I'll just dial in the resistances that I need but okay now I've got this but I can always use it to you see here I got little capacitors and I can use it to dial in um, the capacitance that I need um, also what you could use this for say if you were troubleshooting you could, for example, unsolder one end of a capacitor and then go ahead and dial your capacitance in here and see if that would actually help. Of course, I'm going out of focus here, this camera here. And, <clears throat> well, so that's what you would use this unit for. Um, it's actually got three switches. And these are 10 position rotary switches. 10 position, of course, is a 10 is a decade. And, of course, you got binding posts, positive and negative, although the capacitors in here, they're, um, I don't think you need the um, polarization here. So, as far as a range is concerned, it goes from 100 picofarads to 0.111 microfarads or I think it's 111 which would also equal 111 nanofarads um, and basically that's all there is to this thing I would recommend getting one they're not very expensive um, it wouldn't really pay off to make one yourself you know by the time you get it you get the case here and you get these switches uh, and everything and the um, capacitors you know if you could even find them there's probably precision capacitors in here I think and it, it just doesn't pay off because you can uh, find these often on for example on eBay they do pop up sooner or later so I'll just go ahead and take some quick measurements here and see how much this is still uh, within specifications Oh, and before I go on, um, online there is a schematic available, um, and which is a pretty good, which is a pretty bonus. And here you can see the value of the actual capacitors, and uh, looks like they are in parallel. I would say. So let me go ahead and do some measurements. So whenever you um, want to measure capacitance you try to you have to use something with the leads as short test leads as short as possible so I have the capacitance meter hooked up and it's showing 115 picofarads and that's with the lowest uh, range here and the lowest setting I've set it here for 100 picofarads and we're showing 115 we have to disregard I think about five picofarads because uh, all test leads have capacitance. You can see what happens here when I, um, if I, let me go ahead and I remove the leads and this is showing, this is just the basic with the wire, with the test leads and it's showing five picofarads. Now if I go ahead and, and take those, remove those and we got zero. So I would say Actually, for this for this age of this unit, it's actually doing pretty good. Um, 115. Of course, these things. Of course, they have a certain accuracy percentage too. I think this is like 2.5 percent. I'm not sure, a plus or a minus a digit or two. So let me go ahead and go to the um, maximum here. So I've got 113 nanofarads. 
and the maximum is supposed to be 111 again um, this does have a few percent error so let me go ahead and check that with the fluke multimeter 113 which is still for what I'm doing it's honestly it's it's close enough so let me go ahead and try that other meter and here's the other meter okay it's uh, showing 0.113 microfarads and it's showing about the same thing as the other meter was basically showing so yeah I'd say it's pretty even though after all these years um, it's still I mean it has been a while I don't know exactly the age of this unit but on the schematic it says I think there's a date on there 1979 and I don't know how long they built these things but uh, still actually looking pretty good so I'm not actually not going to do anything to the unit I'm not going to change anything but I am going to open it up real quick and here's the interior looks like it uses 16 capacitors and I just looked looks like um, most of them two-thirds of them or exactly eight of them are one percent capacitors and the other ones are seem to be like five percent on there the larger ones I would say uh, like precision capacitors I think they're hard to get a hold of nowadays anyways I'm gonna leave this like it is I just want to add you have to make sure you have to be aware that this does have limitations here it, it only works within a certain range like I said I think it was from a hundred picofarads to I think it was point one 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 um, microfarad so but it, it does definitely have its uses and again they're not very expensive and I would definitely go ahead and get one if you can find one and if you can afford one they're not too too expensive they pop up on eBay every so often or on other sites um, basically that's all I have to say thanks for watching